Hello, my name is Michael Avery from Cadence Design Systems. I'm going to talk about SVA conjunction properties. A conjunction is an AND, and in this case, each operand is a property expression itself. So what we've got here is an example uh, using the AND operator. So this is a property expression, B implies next cycle C. And here's a different length property, so that each will pass in a different number of cycles. This will, or if it passes, it will do it in two cycles. This one here, D implies next cycle E, followed by F. That will take three cycles to pass, of course. And what we've done is assert that property. So that, that overall property, the one we've created, succeeds when both of the properties hold, either vacuously or non-vacuously. So remember, for any property with implication, it passes under two circumstances. If we take the property expression one, B implies next cycle C. So if B occurs and C occurs next cycle, that's a pass. If B is false, that's a pass as well, a vacuous pass. So these are what I describe as this initialism here, and it stands for why would you ever want to do that? Okay, so I've told you what it does, but I would never use it myself because it doesn't really achieve anything. The disadvantages are it complicates coverage analysis. You know, did each branch of that, you know, each side of the AND operator pass non-vacuously at the same time? How do I find that out without more work? If the property is asserted and it fails, I need to spend time analysing which one or which one failed. It could be both failed, of course. Informal, if the property is asserted and passes, you don't really know whether the other property expression is passing vacuously or non-vacuously, so there's more risk there if you don't specify your coverage correctly. And informal, it does the exact opposite of what you would normally do. So normally informal, you decompose the problem into smaller parts in order to simplify the proof and improve runtime. If you have two properties instead of one, it means you can run those two things in parallel and reduce the runtime even more. Another disadvantage, and, and you know, you know, this is enough for me never to use it. It doesn't do anything you couldn't easily describe in a much less complicated way. So this expression here, the AND of these two properties is the same as asserting each one separately. Okay, so you've gained nothing and you've made it harder to understand. The advantages are, so this is objectively, it's not no, just my opinion. I've never seen a single use of that where it couldn't be done in a more simpler way. So I've never seen any advantage at all since it was first introduced in the very first version of the Language Reference Manual 2005. So unless you think having a single property is an advantage over having more than one, then I'll completely disagree with you, I'm afraid. So here's an example of that property passing. Each of the, one of these signals here, where it's shaded green, it means it must be true in that cycle. Okay. So if anything on the right-hand side of the implication was not high in the, where it's shade of green, that would mean a failure of that assertion. So what we're seeing here we're, is we're looking at a view of uh, Jasper in Visualize, and that's a, an example of the property passing, which is known as a witness. If D was not true at cycle one here, then this by one we mean the first rising edge clock here. If D was not true there, that doesn't mean anything fails, as the left-hand side would be incomplete. So it's vacuously passing. If E was not true at cycle two, or F was not true the cycle after that, then that would mean the property fails. That's conjunction properties, very simple really, and if you looked in the language reference manual, actually, the, you know, there's literally like about 20 words describing it. Um, so really not much to see here. It doesn't really solve any pragmatic problems. So hopefully you found this useful. Thanks for listening and goodbye.